Why all new prop firms will fail. This video is coming out at a very sensitive time when one of the largest prop firms in the industry, my Forex funds is facing legal challenges. This is not a video about them. In fact, this video was planned out and scripted before that entire situation came out. Now we have put out a couple of announcements regarding the situation. Long story short, what you need to know is that we have not, will not, and have never controlled or manipulated spreads, executions, commissions, anything along the lines that would hurt traders. And this is because we work with a globally regulated broker, 8CAP. That means that we are still fully operational and LARC funding isn't going anywhere. But with that out of the way, I think it's more important than ever to talk about the industry as a whole, where it is going, what we are currently seeing, and why it's going to be not only difficult for well-established firms to continue gaining and earning market share, but why prop firms, new ones specifically, are going to struggle. If you are on a prop firm Twitter, you know that it seems like every single week there is a new prop firm launching. Many of them go unnoticed, but those that are backed by influencers gain a lot of attention rather quickly. But with competition getting more and more competitive, it's getting more difficult for firms and it's even getting more difficult for traders to work their way throughout the landscape and figure out what prop firm is best suited for them and which one should they go for. And so in today's video, we are going to discuss why new prop firms are going to fail and the industry as a whole. Reason number one that new prop firms are going to fail is because they cannot take on, manage, and handle the same amount of risk as established firms can. It is no longer 2020 when the industry standard is a 10% phase one target, 5% phase two, and a 10% maximum drawdown. We are now seeing firms offer a phase one and phase two target of 6%, making it much easier for traders. There are also now no time limits. This is fantastic for traders, but it is making it more difficult for prop firms because it means there is a race to the bottom in both ease of challenge and price. And that means that new firms are going to try and adapt the same rules to be competitive, but it is simply not going to be sustainable for them for two reasons. Number one, because they don't have the capital backing them. Most likely, I can't speak for firms specifically, but it's most likely that these new firms don't have sufficient capital behind them to manage and handle the risk that comes with providing easy challenges. The second reason for this is that firms that are just entering the market haven't yet learned how to manage their risks. They don't know how to manage A book, B book, traders, everything that comes along with managing funded traders. But large firms have this data. Large firms have been operating for several years and so they can take these very calculated risks. There's a reason that the largest firms in the industry are the slowest to innovate because they understand that there is a major, major difference between a 10% phase one target and an 8% phase one target or an 8% phase one target and a 6% phase one target. They have the numbers, they can run the data and they know that it's not just a simple marketing technique that they can simply execute, there's a ton of risk that comes with it. And so two years ago, if you were to enter the space, you could easily copy a firm like FTMO. It could be competitive and risk managed, but that is no longer the case. And that's the reason one why new prop firms are much more likely to fail. Reason number two that new prop firms will fail is because they don't have risk management experience. I slightly touched on this before. Essentially, all a prop firm is, is a risk management firm. As a trader, you need to be risk managed in order to be successful, and a prop firm is the exact same way. The only difference between a prop firm's risk management and a trader's risk management is you can't simply go on YouTube and look up how to manage risk as a prop firm. There are a ton of moving pieces, a ton of variables that really you can only get uh, handle on once you have experience. And of course, I mean, if you want to work with an actuary who is just a genius with numbers, that of course will help a lot. But from our experience at Lark Funding, operating for over a year now, it really comes down to just having that experience of having funded traders and knowing how to manage your risk accordingly to ensure that all funded traders will always receive their payouts. Most people at this point know that 
many firms operate on an A book and B book model. A B book model meaning that a prop firm isn't actually taking the trades of their traders and their clients on their book. And an A book model meaning that the firm actually is taking the trades of their clients. They're routing them to their corporate account. And knowing when to switch between A book and B book, vice versa, only A booking, only B booking. These are the lifeblood and the lifeline of a firm. And if they don't know how to properly and efficiently do this, they're going to be out of business. There's no other way around it. This is really the secret sauce of firms because if you A book 90% of traders, well, it's not going to work out very well because as we know, only five to 10% of traders will make money. And there's even a percentage of those traders within the five to 10% that made money, but only made money by being lucky. And so you really have to look at the data to determine who should be on that A book. On the other hand, if you only B book traders, if you never actually take the trades of successful traders, well, it only takes one or two traders that go on an incredible win rate and have some massive wins all of a sudden you need to pay out tens of thousands, sometimes even hundreds of thousands of dollars. And that's got to come from somewhere. It's not coming from the actual profitability of the trades because you haven't taken them. So at this point, I'm sure you can see the complexity of it, of knowing how to manage this risk and new firms, if they don't have the right infrastructure in place, the right management, the right team, they won't know how to do it because it is trial and error in that situation. Like I said earlier, it's no longer 2020, which means we see no reason for why you would be signing up for a firm that is brand new, that doesn't yet have a track record. When a firm launches, everything can look fantastic on paper when it first launches. But remember, it takes a few months for traders to go through the client journey, get funded, and actually trade that funded account. So things might look great at the beginning, but remember, I think at least a few months of experience for the firm, a few months of running minimum a year is most ideal. Number three, thin margins are only going to get thinner as competition heats up. Many watching might think that prop firm is a gold mine. You must make tons of money, but that simply is not always the case. It's not necessarily the case. There are a ton of fees related to running a prop firm that many traders don't think of and don't see. Number one, you have technology fees to run the backend system, the website, the tech, the dashboard. That is a huge overhead cost for firms. Then of course you have account creations. If you're working with a broker like we are, we're working with 8cap. Well, 8cap unfortunately doesn't provide their demo accounts for free. And so when everybody signs up, when we run competitions, we owe 8cap money for creating those accounts and running them for us. Of course, you have management and staff, you have payouts, you have miscellaneous fees, the competitions we run, marketing, so on and so forth. There are a ton of fees that come with running a prop firm. And remember, a challenge is designed for one thing and one thing only. It's designed to filter out the traders from the gamblers. And so the easier you make a challenge, the more gamblers, the more unexperienced, the more lucky traders will move on to the funded stage. And that is going to lower the profitability of a firm. Now, a 10% margin on a multi-million dollar or billion dollar company isn't so bad, but there's many firms in the industry that simply aren't pulling in those numbers that are a lot smaller and won't be able to operate on 10% of $10,000 or 10% of $100,000. There is an economy of scale here. And I'm not saying specifics in terms of what kind of revenue you need to make money. I am just saying, and we are just saying that profit margins are getting thinner due to competition, but it's the larger firms that are going to be able to manage this change in the industry. They're going to be able to act accordingly. Whereas a newer firm, it's going to be much, much more difficult. It is no longer 2020 the prop firm industry is quickly changing. It is quickly moving and there are a ton of firms in the space. It is very competitive. And unfortunately, there's not always good news that we see in the industry that is more true than ever. So I highly encourage all of you at Lark Funding, we highly encourage all of you to go with a prop firm that has a track record, to go with a prop firm that best suits your needs and go with one that your gut tells you might be the right one for you. For anyone that has been impacted by the MyForex Fund situation, 
our hearts go out to you. It is really an unfortunate situation, but we hope that it gets resolved quickly and that the industry only continues to move forward from this, that transparency is brought forth in a new level. And with all that being said, we're still very excited for what is to come at Lark Funding and what is to come for the industry as a whole. If you made it this far, we appreciate it. As always, we will see you in the next video. And until then, peace.